Hey folks, today we're going to do something completely unnecessary but very fun. We're going to upgrade my bedroom Linux machine to a Ryzen system. Why? Uh, I, I just felt compelled to do it because I thought it would be fun. <laughs> I don't need to upgrade it, but it does uh, kick the can down the road for other systems as well. Like it allowed me to put uh, the Haswell build back in my sleeper. And it allows me to put the Pentium build into the uh, Prime Systems case over there. So, we're going to build another Ryzen system. Not quite as ridiculous as my main computer. Uh, it wasn't really that ridiculous. It was this same motherboard, a Ryzen 5 and 64 gigs of RAM. That's main computer over the top fun. This is just, this is a lot more modest, I think. So, what we're going to do here is pretty much try to replace what was in it. This had the Haswell build originally in it, which was a uh, an i5, 32 gigs of RAM, and a, and a 750Ti for that particular moment. What we're going to do is essentially replicate the same amount of RAM and the quad-core chip on Ryzen. So, this is the same exact motherboard that's in my main computer, an A320M Pro 4, has excellent I.O., excellent stability, excellent audio, excellent everything. I decided to go with the cheapest Ryzen chip you can get as of now, and that's the Ryzen 3 1200, which is just a standard quad-core chip with no hyper-threading at all, or multi-threading, multi whatever um, whatever AMD calls it, dynamic multi-threading, I have no idea. <laughs> I, either way, um, it, it, ha it is four cores, four threads, 10 megs of cache, 3.1 gigahertz, 3.4 boost. So it's a really good chip for the money. Uh, these Ryzen 3 chips are really nice. So we got the, the same exact motherboard as my main computer. We got a lower end chip. And we have... <clears throat> GL Evo 4 is a hardcore gaming memory with Dyna 4 SLT dual channel. <laughs> the most intense memory I've ever bought. Like, seriously. I've never... This is so gamery, it's kind of cringeworthy, to be honest. It's 32 gigs of uh, DDR4 2133. It was the cheapest I could find. Since there's a RAM shortage right now, I didn't really go for the speediest RAM I could. I went for the cheapest kit of 32 that I could find. And that is this Geel kit, which is pretty gamery and has some ridiculous looking heat sinks. But <laughs> you know what? If it works, it works. It was even advertised to work with Intel like Z170 boards and stuff like that. So I think this came out during Skylake era. But with the advancements in BIOSes on these new Horizon boards, I don't think this RAM is going to be a problem. It'll just act like RAM. Uh, at least that's what I'm hoping that it does. So I think it's time we get ready to build this thing. IO shield, all that stuff. The screws for uh, your M.2 drives, and of course. Uh, the board itself. The board itself. As we saw when I built my main computer. Very nice board. It only has four SATA ports is the only real downfall of it, but putting a card in these is not difficult. I did that with my main computer. I could do that with this if I wanted to as well. The I.O. is pretty darn good. Real PS2, USB, uh, VGA, DVI, HDMI, USB-C, USB-3, um, Ethernet, and of course, audio, Realtek, Elna Audio. And this this can also handle higher wattage chips, so if you got an overclock version of a chip, it'll work fine in this. You get your two M.2 slots, one here and one here. And you get an X1 slot, X16 slot, and what looks like an X4 slot down there. Might, even, might only be an X2 or an X4, I'm not sure. What's one of those two? I think it's an X4 though. And you get four RAM slots, which is, are only going to be occupied by two sticks. And of course, uh, there's the Ryzen 3 cooler, which will fit which will fit where these brackets normally sit. So there you go. I think the first order of business is to take a look at the CPU. Okay, we have the chip here. This is your nice Ryzen 3 1200. I do not see any bent pins or anything, so I think we're good. It also comes with a sticker, of course. And here's the cooler that a Ryzen 3 1200 comes with. It's a pretty thin-looking cooler. 
Comes with its own thermal goop, of course, which I'm going to be removing. So, not a very tall cooler. It reminds me of some of the Socket 775 coolers I've used in the past. Hopefully this is enough to cool it. It should be. 65 watt chip, so, hey, there you go. PWM fan and everything. It does not have LEDs because it's not a Ryzen 7, 17, or 1800X or anything like that, but... I'm going to be using the stock cooler on this machine because it's probably not going to need anything more than that. So let me get that assembled and we'll uh, take a nice look at what that looks like. Alright, we got the stock cooler on there. It's quite a bit smaller than the, uh, the one I got with my Ryzen 5 6 core CPU. The RAM is not obnoxiously tall, but it is a little bit taller than it could be. Right about there is where normal RAM height would be, but this is up maybe like quarter to half of an inch, something like that. Uh, it's not horrendously tall. So this GL, this GL Forza RAM, Evo Forza RAM, isn't the most obnoxious in the world. It's not, at least not, not the way. It, it's not as obnoxious as it looked in the pictures online. It's actually fairly okay. Uh, it doesn't look bad in this board either. Surprisingly enough, it actually looks pretty good on an AMD system so hopefully the RAM works that's my main concern because I'm never I'm never gonna look at this RAM again if it just sits in my computer and you know does its thing so I think it's time to get this guy into this into the uh, case over there and uh, you know fire this thing up and see what it can do the other thing I'm gonna be doing with this build is I'm gonna be putting my 750 Ti in there uh, since that's what was installed originally with the Haswell stuff. So, 750Ti will go back in there. The drivers are already installed on Debian, so that shouldn't be a big deal. So I'm just going to drop this. This thing is essentially going to be a drop-in replacement. I'm just going to drop it in there and boot it up and use it. So, there you have it, guys. Let's put this thing in its case and run it through the paces. Alright, the system is put together. You can see the motherboard in there, you can see a wad of cables here, that's all, let's velcro it up as best I can. Have some uh, twisty down there out of the way, mostly these Molexes. Uh, I plugged in my super old USB header thing here, which only has two ports on it. I got the 750Ti plugged in here, that should be fine for this, for this system since it's just a Linux computer. Uh, there are my two one terabyte drives in RAID 1. There is the 120 gig. It's a 120 gig Hyundai Sapphire SSD. There's your Ryzen 3 chip underneath the heatsink, and this 32 gigs of GL memory, 2133. So, oh yeah, and a 520 watt Seasonic power supply. That's a good power supply. And an LG Blu-ray drive. It reads Blu-rays and writes DVDs and CDs, but does not write Blu-rays. So, there you go. This is the system. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna hook this thing up and go into the BIOS and uh, configure this thing to boot from uh, legacy mode instead of UEFI because I don't have this version of Debian installed using UEFI. So let's button this thing back up and get it ready for prime time. Okay, I've got the computer plugged in down here. This UP or UPS KVM being in the way, so. Here's an overview of the setup. I got this wrist pad, keyboard, Microsoft mouse, which is on for some reason, and um, 1080p monitor. So let's turn that on and uh, do a cold first boot of this machine. Smoke test! Hey. It turns on at least. Let's see if we can get into the BIOS. I think it's the delete key on this system. Now on these Ryzen boards, when you first boot them, it tends to take a while for it to recognize the chip, and then it'll, uh, I think it'll reboot, or it'll just sort of recognize it and go into uh, startup or whatever. It takes a while for these to start sometimes. There it goes. Ah yes, it's the same BIOS as before. So, here we go. It recognizes the Ryzen 3 1200 quad-core processor. Here's your um, 3.1 gigahertz 
your 8 megs of cache, L3 cache anyway. There's the 32 gigs of uh, GeoRAM. It's recognized as DDR4-2133, so even though that was advertised that it was for Intel, uh, it seems like uh, Ryzen has matured enough to the point where you can just put any memory in it and it'll just work now, which is very nice to see. So let's change a few things here. Let's enable virtualization in both places that it needs to be. Enable virtualization support there. Uh, let's see. That's in the exact order it should be. There's the Hyundai SSD, there's the two one terabyte drives, there's nothing in the M.2 slot because I don't have any other drives. Uh, what else we got in here? Turn the trusted TPM crap off because I'll never use that. All that stuff can stay the same. Uh, what else we have? It might be a good idea to flash the BIOS while I'm in here. Looks like the uh, stock cooler is definitely working. Fan is spinning at almost 2,000 RPM. Uh, power supply voltages are in good shape. Well, the 12 volts at its upper limit, however, once you actually put a load on it, it'll go down, so that's fine. It boots from the Hyundai SSD. That's fantastic. That's what we want. Uh... Oh, right. Um, I gotta change the way it boots. Where do I do that? I don't even remember. I think it's just in the boot menu somewhere. Here we go. Okay, legacy only, legacy only. Alright. I think that's what we want, so let's do exit and see if it boots into Debian. Let me turn the speakers on while I'm at it. Alright, let's see if the thing boots. And once I know that it boots, I'll just I'll see if the BIOS has an update or not. Oh, is it gonna work? Hey, there we go. There we go, we got Debian go into the operating system and see what it says. Excellent, yes. Okay, it sees the quad-core chip there, sees all four. There's your 32 gigs of RAM, which it filled up to almost a gig pretty quickly, wow. There's my ridiculous amount of swap that'll undoubtedly make people annoyed. <laughs> it does recognize the quad-core chip, excellent. So, this looks like it was a runaway success. I literally dropped the board in, booted it up, and it worked. No questions asked. Now the question is, how stable is it? That's a question that remains to be seen. And while we have that in mind, I'm going to go into the BIOS and update, try to update it. Now, the thing about ASRock boards that's really convenient is the way you update BIOSes is a very professional way. Uh, it can be done via the internet through the BIOS firmware itself. I'm also doing this while there's a thunderstorm outside, which is not the smartest idea in the world. But I just want to see if there's an update. This board is brand new, so I'd assume not, but I would just like to see. So we'll go to Internet Flash here. And uh, see if there's an update. I don't think there is, because there, there, there wasn't an update for my other board. But we shall see just in case. Oh, there is an update. All right. Let's do it. Okay, cool. This is this is what's nice about these ASRock boards. You can you don't need to go into Windows or get a Windows utility to update the BIOS. You can do it from the BIOS itself, which is very nice. So I'll let that install and then we'll come back and uh, I'll let you know how stable this thing is after using it for a bit. And we'll do like a test of rendering video as well. Okay, so I have Handbrake open with a video that I was converting using the uh, <clears throat> using the Haswell system. It took maybe I think it was a little over an hour. I quite I can't quite remember, but I have the system monitor up here, and we're going to start encoding now. This is just name the video test out. This is a .dv file that's about 15 gigabytes, 
and I'm going to compress it down to 640 by 480 with deinterlacing, with a size, with a dimensions change, and um, same frame rate and everything. So let's start encoding and see what it does. Oh wow! So this took over an hour on uh, the Haswell system. It's taking around 20 minutes, 20 minutes on the Ryzen 3 system. This is the lowest tier Ryzen you can buy right now. The Ryzen 3 1200. No overclocks, no nothing, no joke. This is encoding uh, so much faster, unbelievably faster. Wow. I'm kind of blown away by that. That's unbelievable. These Ryzen chips are incredible. Wow. This was so worth it. This means I can have a bunch of conversion projects going on at the same time on many computers, which I have done before. I've done that when clients want me to convert a bunch of stuff or when I rip DVDs, for example, for my own collection to stick on my server or to bring with me on vacation so I don't have to bring discs with me, which is kind of a hassle. And um, it, it this is a program that I use for a lot of it. It's either Handbrake or it's um, X Media Re X X Media Recode. Yeah, that one. And uh, this this speed is unbelievable. This is so much better than that Haswell system. Now, granted, the Haswell system ha was at a lower clock speed, and it was a T, and it was a forty four sixty T, but this is so much better than that it's unbelievable I think even at a higher frequency it wouldn't have been a whole lot better this this for the money is incredible this is a one hundred and ten dollar chip that's an incredible value that this ruins the i3 as far as at least on Cabby Lake anyway I don't know what Coffee Lake's going to be like but this absolutely ruins an i3 and it ruins a it ruins a low power i5 on the Haswell architecture that's incredible so, I'm already impressed with this Ryzen 3 chip. This this is incredible. So, the performance was definitely worth the money. The question is, how stable is it? Well, only time will tell, but I think, at least on Windows, it's very stable. On Linux, I would assume things work just as well as they would on newer kernels. Let me, uh, let me go into the terminal so we can see what type of kernel we're running here. It's 4.9.0-3, which I think is new enough for Ryzen chips to work well. Um, I haven't tested virtualization or anything like that, but wow. Cancel current and stop. All right. But wow, I'm very, very, I'm blown away by how good that is. That's incredible. And it was using around 80% of each core of the CPU. It was uh, handling itself quite well. So that's really cool. Now, the question is, does, how well does virtualization work? Do I have any virtual machines already on here? That's my question. I haven't used VirtualBox in a while. Oh, good. I do have uh, some VirtualBox stuff open. So let's see. Let's see how Ubuntu Mate works. AMD-V is disabled in the BIOS or by the host OS. Ugh. Yeah, maybe I'll have to screw with this a little bit more to get it to work. So, while I'm running updates to the system here, it's building the kernel module for uh, the NVIDIA driver. Oh, it just finished. Okay. Anyway, I've been looking up the, uh, the 1200 chip itself. And it does, AMDV is on the chip. It is supported. So, AMD virtualization technology is there. So, that should be working. All right, let's see what it did. Yeah, it turned that off. It added this, though. It added this feature. Yeah, it turned the virtualization stuff off. That's all it did. Turn the virtualization stuff back on. Did I miss anything? Did it reset anything else? Yeah, turn the trusting computing stuff back on. You know, that's annoying when settings just change on a BIOS update like that. That's kind of irritating. It's holding CPU temperature pretty well, though. It's in the 30s on that thin little cooler. So that's pretty nice. It definitely updated the UEFI to 
so wondering if I shouldn't do that to my other system. But anyway, yeah, that, that was the problem. When I updated the BIOS, it just it reset the virtualization settings. That's why it didn't work. So I guess my stability test will be a virtual machine and use over time. I mean, obviously, if I have issues with this, I'll be uh, reporting on that. But for now, it seems fine. It's just acting like a normal computer. So there you have it. Okay, now, now that I have re-enabled all that stuff in the BIOS, let's try booting up React OS. Oh boy. Does React OS work? It is working. Hey. We've got React OS. Cool. Let's open up Winamp in React OS. trying. Come on, you can do it. Just start Winamp. Direct sound output not found. Huh. Well, at least React OS works. Let me shut that off. Let's try the one we were going to try before, which is Ubuntu. I have some other stuff on here. I have Triskel, I have Duvon, Debian, OpenSUSE, all right, let's see if Ubuntu Mate starts up properly. I think this one has the virtual machine guest editions in it. Come on, you can do it, Ubuntu. Hey, virtualization is working the way it's supposed to. That's pretty cool. Yep, it appears that Ubuntu is working fine. Yep. It's working just fine. All right. We have an Ubuntu Mate desktop running in VirtualBox. Beautiful. See the Mate system monitor. Yep, even it sees the Ryzen through the virtual machine. So, does it work outside? Yes, it does. So, vir my virtual machines should work fine now. That's excellent to see. So the so the kernel in Debian 9 seems to be up to date enough to handle um, the Ryzen 3 chip, and I'm, I'd assume any of the Ryzen chips that are out now. Maybe I don't know about Threadripper, but uh, at least the consumer Ry Ryzen 3, 5, and 7 looks like they'll probably work fine. So my virtualization stuff works properly. I, I looks pretty stable so far. So uh, yeah, pretty cool. Um, so as far as my testing of the essential functions that require a bit of special speci speciality blah, 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 to work, uh, everything seems to work fine. Uh, virtualization works, which is a big one for me. Uh, converting video is substantially faster on this computer, which is excellent. So now I can run multiple conversion projects at the same time on two Ryzen chips that are unbelievably quick. That will make my life so, so much better. And... Um, yeah, I think the only thing left to test is graphics to see if uh, you know that makes anything unstable. But I don't think it will personally. Uh, it seems like this is pretty rock solid, so I'll I'll use it a little bit and then I'll report back. Okay, so I'm here to report back on the use of this Ryzen 3 build. It is very stable, extremely stable. Um, it's pretty much just as stable as the Haswell build that was in here before, except that it's just much faster um, as far as the performance goes. So this is definitely one of the better decisions I've made going Ryzen 3 on my Linux box. I, I can confirm that that is a good idea to do because you get very good performance out of the chip. The chipset doesn't really complain. That helicopter outside is kind of annoying. and. Um, it, it performs very well. The only thing I found is with this motherboard in particular, the mic input is kind of staticky and scratchy for some reason. Not sure why that is. I could just be this particular motherboard. So I got rid of my 30-year-old Apple microphone and plugged in a 2005 webcam. This old, this ancient Logitech Quick Cam Communicate, I think is what it was. And the mic on this works fine. And so does the webcam. Um, because of the way Pulse Audio works, it keeps the webcam activated all the time so that uh, the microphone works. So that blue LED is a little bit annoying, but other than that, it works pretty great. 
Uh, and I actually have a webcam on this computer again, albeit it's a 320 by 240 or 160 by 120 webcam, depending on the mode you set. So it's kind of a crappy webcam, but I don't need anything fancy. If I'm just video conferencing with somebody, it's really not a big deal. So, yeah, there you go. Uh, Ryzen 3 on Linux. Definitely a go in, in my book. Uh, this is on an A320 chipset and all that, so it all just works. Very happy to see that, so. Excellent system. Very excellent system. Anyhow, um, so if any of you were thinking of upgrading to Ryzen and are Linux users, I say go for it. Debian, if Debian 9 works great on it, I can only imagine what some of the newer kernels that are above 4.9 will do with this hardware. Uh, so, you know, there you have it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. So, nice to do some more AMD stuff, just like I did, you know, back in 2005, 6, 7. So, it's nice to see AMD back on top. So we'll see what happens with Coffee Lake in the next part of this year to next year. So I guess we'll see what happens with Coffee Lake. That'll be interesting to see as well, because they're supposed to have six cores in their lineup for consumer CPUs as well. So we'll see what happens. I should mention one thing that happened with this uh, computer recently. Um, I had some very strange instability when launching Firestorm actually. It tends to use the hard drive a little bit when it starts up and that's the second live viewer I use. Um, it tried to log in and it just died all of a sudden and while it was doing so it mashed the hard drive. You can see that hard drive light was just on the whole time. Uh, and so I thought I had some general system instability so I rebooted and that seemed to fix it. Um, but then I decided to go to disks here. I went to this drive and I noticed it has a bad sector. It has developed a bad sector. So what I think happened is that a sector was reallocating as I was trying to launch that viewer and that this drive is on its way out. So what I did is I ordered a, a new drive to replace this one, um, a two terabyte drive. So I'm slowly going to upgrade this to a two terabyte array. Uh, probably not going to make videos of replacing the drives because that's just not exciting, but just know that that's going to happen eventually. This thing will eventually have a 2 terabyte capacity in RAID 1. So, yeah, I think that instability was caused by this drive reall reallocating a sector, so yeah, there's that. Plus, it's XFS on a RAID 1, so it take it would probably take a little longer for everything to figure itself out. Anyway, there you have it. I just thought I'd sneak that into this video. Anyhow, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and have a good one, everybody. Ciao.